be adding in a muzzle flash. We're going to start off with just a solid 2D or 3D camera track, and then that's going to give us the ability to do all of the work that we need. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw in a camera tracker. I'm going to throw a camera tracker in, and there's a few things that we could do also. I'm going to just also drop in a roto node. We don't want the camera trackers to get confused on our guy over here, so it's just going to make our life a lot easier if we just roto the area in which he is at. So yes, we will uh, go ahead and roto this guy out. So I'm just going to add in several different keyframes. I like to just jump, you know, every five keyframes or so, or every five frames and then add in a new keyframe. And we're just gonna roto him out. Okay, so let's go look at this camera tracker. I'm going to uh, plug this mask into that. And then that way we can say, let's see, do, 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 camera tracker under mask. I'm gonna set this to the uh, mask alpha and it's going to basically be ignoring the alpha of the shot um, now in our settings i'm going to up this to like 300 features that it's looking for to track and now we're just going to go ahead and track that it's going to go through our entire shot ignoring that roto i'm going to hit the solve button and yes our error is 0.89 that's honestly totally fine for what we need to do but uh i might go through here and then just say delete rejected and then you're going to say delete unsolved now if we go over here we could say update solve and this will update it according to the points that we already have in here. Uh, for frame 17, here's what we're gonna do. We can import some muzzle flash material. Now, one thing you'll notice on this specific footage, well, actually we'll notice a few things. Uh, first, I need to tag the input color space to be correct. But uh, one of the first things that we'll notice is that it doesn't have any smoke in there. It's just this muzzle flash and they've got several different muzzle flashes in here. I'm gonna add in a frame range here till about 19. And so now this specific asset that we're doing only will play for those amount of frames. The other thing that we're going to want to do is we already know that our first frame needs to line up on frame, I think it's 17, 10, 17. Yes. So I can add in after this frame range, I can say uh, time offset and I can line it up with 1016, I think, in order to get this to work. So, okay, so now that our muzzle flash is like that, all we have to do is really just drop that into our scene. We're going to want this to move according to the camera or according to the gun, whereas the smoke is going to be moving according to the scene. With that being said, I'm going to add in a tracker and we're going to track, oops, uh, we're going to track the original footage here, um, but we're going to track specifically this gun point. So if I add in a new tracker and we just go ahead and go view that real quick gonna keep our tracker pretty small but the area of uh, distance of where that point could be is gonna be much 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 larger because he does yank this gun back quite quickly no I am gonna want to do it on this frame in which case also set the reference frame to this frame so that way we don't have any problems going forward and then now if we go ahead and track forward at the top here it's going to track the gun if we go to our tracker node here um, Let's see it gets that frame correct and then from here on out it just kind of goes off i'm going to delete the the next few frames and we're just going to manually track this which you could do just by grabbing your tracker so we're going to do a match move here and we'll just output that over here to our uh muzzle flash that we want to have i'm going to drop that in in a second but if we take this now and we merge this back on top of our footage uh we could just see where this muzzle flash is going so i'm just going to grab this and move this guy over disable that I'm going to find the point in where we could put this uh, pin right here and then now I'm just gonna change the center of this to live in that area so that'll be 1920 by 582 I think what you want to do is you want to look at the original footage uh, right here and then figure out what that point is and you can see that number on the bottom of your uh, screen here if I left uh, control click it'll actually put a pin there so that way I don't have to keep going back over to it but now that we have that, uh, let's go ahead and add this into our shot. This is a very big muzzle flash so far. We're not going to want it to be this large. If you roughly line that up, you can get your muzzle flash to be the correct size. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. And then we're just gonna line that up with the barrel here. A few things I wanna select here on this video footage is that before the frame one happens, we want it to be black. And then before the last frame, we want it to be black as well. And now we'll notice that the muzzle flash kind of just sits there in that area of the screen and does not move with everything so we're going to now take this match move that we have and drop that in and with our camera track after we have all of our solve over here let's go ahead and output a scene plus and what this is going to do is it's actually going to undistort our shot ever so slightly because there wasn't that much distortion on the shot to begin with what we're going to want to do is find roughly where this area is in like kind of like depth wise from the camera i'm going to say let's create a card 
I'm going to throw that card onto our scene. And now if we go view our scene, I can see our card. I'm going to throw a texture onto it real quick. So if we just throw a checkerboard onto our card, we can see what we're doing here. If we double click our card, we can change the total scale of this. So I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller. And it looks like I made this too high in the air. So we'll just move that down, roughly position this on the Y axis accordingly to the gun. But if we go to our project settings, I believe 24 frames per second is correct here, but we want to change our file format size to something like 1920 by 1080, because that is what our input source is uh, for our shot. That does a few things for us. All the auto settings of like what the root format is, it automatically sets that correctly, as well as when I go to our um, scanline renderer here, the first thing I'm going to want to do is unselect uh, the BG here, so that way our card is over alpha. And then on top of that, we'll just add a merge node in now. And if we plug this merge B input into the uh, lens distortion node that we have there, now it's going to do the same thing as if we just had this selected on BG, but now we're going to have the alpha of all of our cards. It should feel like it's really grounded into the shot, and it does, you know, because we got a good camera track. But uh, now that's floating in that space right where we want that smoke to exist. But if we go to frame 1018 here, we can now drop in some kind of card into our shot. Uh, with our shot here, we're going to want to add in some smoke. So let's go look at some of these assets again. Now we can just drag that over into our scene. And now uh, we could go ahead and change the input transform to the correct color space. We're going to want that on our card. But instead of just dragging this directly onto our card like so, we're going to project it onto the card. So firstly, let's go ahead and make the scale of this card super big so it encompasses the entire shot here. And that way we're not clipping any edges. And then secondly, I'm going to merge this onto the original footage here. Um, we just kind of need to line everything up. So I'm going to also grab the time offset here to make sure that the time offset starts at frame 1017. And now if we go ahead and add a transform on, if we go drop this into our shot here, oh, and again, we're gonna need to select our transform, find the area in which the smoke is starting. This just makes it a lot easier to do this. And now let's go ahead and we'll have our transform here. And now we can move this to wherever we want in our shot. This is the beginning of our smoke field. So let's go ahead and just drop that in like so. I'm gonna kind of get the angle because the angle does matter in which it's coming out because it's got to feel like force from where it's doing that. What we want to want is probably to use something like an O-Flow. And let's change the speed here to like a 1.7. See what that looks like. And for this frame here, we're going to want our offset. We'll just adjust our offset again real quick. Probably there. And so now if we go ahead and line up our transform to that, angle this a little bit better to like the how the gun is positioned here. And that'll be good. Okay, for our camera, we're gonna make sure we're doing this on frame 1017, since this is where we are lining everything up with our transform and our merge node. We're gonna delete our merge node. Okay, guys, follow along here. Camera tracker, copy, paste it, and don't change your frame. We're going to uh, say no animation on this camera tracker. And then we go ahead and add in a project 3D, again, do it using a classic. We're gonna make sure that's going into our card here. And camera is selected on camera. So now if we go ahead and move this over to our gun smoke, it's essentially going to be projecting this gun smoke on this frame as if it were this angle right here. So that way, if the camera's moving in like any other angle, we're going to see some warping happening. Luckily for us, it's not uh, the camera's not rotating or anything like that, but it's going to be projecting this gun smoke as if it was like merging it onto the frame onto the card only on this frame. And then since this is not animated, it's going to now the card's going to move with the scene. And since it's moving with the scene, it's going to move with our shot. And that's perfectly how we want it. So now if we go ahead and go view our uh, gun smoke add on here, uh, the other thing we're going to notice is that we're going to get a little bit of clipping here. And the reason why that's clipping is because under our project 3D, it says crop. So we're going to unselect that crop. And then that way we're making sure that it's not going to crop on our shot. So uh, first things first, we've got like a window back here and you can even see some harsh light coming from this angle of the camera. So we're going to want to try to emulate that on our smoke because right now our smoke is super flat. Let's go ahead and after this time offset is happening here, we're going to want to do some further adjustments. Let's just add a grade note in and kind of set the value to uh, the environment in which it's sitting in. You're trying to match the lighting as much as possible. So just giving it kind of like that warm musty feel, it's kind of setting it into that world 
And now, uh, the other thing we're gonna wanna do is kind of add in kind of the shading in which the light is hitting the smoke in like specific angles. So uh, first things first, let's go ahead and we're gonna use a merge node here. I'm also gonna use a roto node and we're gonna drag that roto node into our grade here. We're just gonna create a separate area in which we're doing all this stuff. But uh, taking this roto node here, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna want the top portion of this smoke to feel more lit than the bottom portion of the smoke, which will have more shadow to it. And now if uh, we go view this, I'm going to use the mask as our output here. And then I'm going to blur after that a decent amount, just so that way it kind of like fades between the top and the bottom. This section here, I'm just gonna lighten the top of our smoke. And now if we add another merge node in on top here, you'll notice that we're kind of lighting the top of the smoke before it gets sent to our card down there. So now if we go view our merge spec here, you can see already that it's adding in like this extra kind of like glow. But just like that, we could actually uh, go ahead and just grab the bottom fringes and even make that a little bit darker. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that as well. And add another roto node in. And let's go ahead and add another merge node. And the mask is going to be grabbed from that roto. And we're just gonna grab this bottom section down here. Do our GPA again. And of course, blur after our roto node. And we're just going to want this very bottom edge of the muzzle flash because this is going to be the shadow of our muzzle flash and of course we could add another grade node in and we'll be merging this back on top of our composite we're going to darken up this edge down there we're going to probably want to give it a little bit more brown texture to it as well you can kind of see that musty environment coming through and now if we go into our scene here the other thing is, is I uh, was keyframing this to move with it. Let's go ahead and adjust some of these keyframes. I only, I, I don't want as much of the top, so I'm just trying to, and you can kind of see that right there coming through. We're just creating this kind of lighting. It feels a little harsh. We might want to blur that a little bit more. If we blur that a little bit more and then let's go ahead and just drag that a little ever so slightly further up. And we, one thing we could also do is by selecting this blur node here, we can actually keyframe like uh, different parts of it. So like for instance, this amount of blur here is good, but maybe on this frame here, we wanted to have less blur. That way it's not as encompassing of our entire shot. So now if we play that back, looks pretty nice. Let's go back to our merge node down here. Let's play this back and see what we got. And now uh, the other thing that we can do to really allow this to kind of like sit into our environment a little bit better is we're going to composite the overall grade of this. Now we are using 3D for this shot. So one thing that we can easily just do is just adjust the amount of mix between the merge here and the background. Okay, now let's go ahead and view this with our muzzle flash that we did earlier. All we have to do is just add this all the way down there. And it's okay that the smoke is behind it because again, muzzle flash will be in front then sparks, and then the smoke. We're gonna do a few things here. We're gonna break up the overall kind of effect that we're receiving on this uh, muzzle flash, because I feel like it's just lingering for so long. So I, I think one thing we could for sure do here though, is I'm gonna use an Oflow plugin. Ah, here it is, frame number. So this will be 1017. I'm gonna set a keyframe there, and then I'm gonna set a keyframe here for 1000. And that's actually gonna just animate this to move out of regular frame rate. But now I'm going to want this here to be like 10, let's see, it's looking good to me. Essentially we are creating our own frames for how fast we want this muzzle flash to happen. So let's go to our frame 1017, which is where we're going to want to have the majority of our effect kind of happening here. Firstly, we can add in some gray notes and then kind of just do some, you know, roto work where we add in some stuff onto the ground here. We're gonna kind of want to add a tiny glow to the, the ground, very blurred out glow for sure. So let's go ahead and grab our roto node here and we're just gonna roto this whole area in which we would see some kind of like specularity on the ground. Gives us something like that. I'm thinking this might be a little too much blur. So we can set the white point to the ground here and then let's disable the grade node real quick. And then we're going to set the gain to the color of our muzzle flash. So probably something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and set a keyframe here, for instance. And then if we go back to 1016, we'll move that keyframe. I might add just a little less of a glow. And then it's down to nothing pretty much here. I might even want this frame to be a little bit more at the apex of the muzzle flash. 
we've got the muzzle flash here on the ground. I would say let's go ahead and do that onto some other parts of our environment as well. So let's go ahead and add another grade node in. Probably just going to continue this down, I suppose. And then with our blur here, let's go ahead and blur that quite a bit. We can even blur this not quite as much as 300, but like 200 should be fine. And now if I take our grade node here, we're just going to disable it again, but we're going to select our white point of something on our bricks somewhere and then use our gain as something on the yellow here. And that's going to kind of just like glow our background. And then again, just using a mix node to kind of a little bit more of a fall off. And uh, we can go ahead and keyframe this as well. So we'll go back to our frame before here and then just make sure that's completely turned off. And we don't need a camera track on this glow because it is only for like one frame. So you can kind of get away with a little bit more there. I want to see more of his outline. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm thinking let's add another merge node in after our blur. And I'm going to uh, kind of create like more of a roto edge of him. It's just got to be decently close to his shape. And we'll go ahead and set this to pre-multiply that. And I'm going to invert our selection of our roto now and if i move this guy over we'll notice that we're starting to get a bit of a shadow on the wall as to like where his body would be in relation to that kind of flare and now all we need to do is just add another blur node in and we could just blur that roto node a little bit just a tiny bit to give it some shape yeah it's pretty good and then for our grade node here i just want to probably lessen the overall amount of muzzle flash that we're getting and then to here, I'll have that turn off by that point. So that way it's only by one frame. Next thing we're going to want to do here though is add a little bit of a, a flash on our actor as well. We're gonna do one more grade node. And I'm going to have another roto and I'm just gonna keep that going down the pipeline here. And we're gonna do, um, for this, I'll do a general kind of like roto. So as much as possible, follow the height of our dude. This will make it feel a little bit more 3D into our sequence. I'm just kind of following, it's like contouring essentially is what we're doing here. So I'm gonna pre-multiply that and then let's go ahead and blur everything a little bit, not too much. And now, um, again, we're just gonna go into our white point here and we're just gonna manually add in some glow here. I think we need to blur it a little bit more maybe, yeah just feel, felt a little too circular on the wall in the back. Probably gonna wanna add in a bolt, uh, like a, a shell into the shot. So let's go back here, find, uh, let's see, bullet hits, ejecting bullet shells on Action VFX's website. So we're gonna be able to add in this uh, muzzle flash here, I'm or this pistol shot here. I'm gonna say, let's go ahead and do this. Um, more so where the smoke is located because we're going to be projecting this onto its own card. So we can do that by selecting something back here and adding in a card just like we did before. And we'll just plug that into our scene. And that should play pretty nicely. The only thing we have to be concerned about is since we are using a... We're controlling the alpha of the smoke on our merge layer here by setting that to 0.5 we're going to want that merge to be a little bit higher. Thinking that if we add a merge node into the very top of our sequence there, and then we set this to a one, let's go ahead and disable this for right now. But now uh, we have this other card that we're going to be projecting onto. We can use a merge node, plug that into our lens distortion, like we did before, a transform node, and let's go ahead and see where we need to put this shell. Uh, first things first, we'll need to offset our Emma, our bullet flying effect. Probably gonna wanna overflow this too, right? Just change the overall speed of it to 2x. Okay, now let's go ahead and delete this merge node. This is looking pretty good. I just removed the merge node. I'm going to now project that onto our shot. We're gonna do the same thing before. We can actually just copy paste this stuff because it's using the same 1017 frame number that we were using. And I would just plug that into our transform here and plug this directly into our uh, card. Oh, whoops, we could delete this card and use this card here. The only thing also I might want to do is throw a, throw a merge node after this transform. I'm actually going to reformat this at the very top of our comp to 1920 by 1080. 
And I just want to double check this again against our lens distortion that we're doing. So 1017, let's go ahead and delete our merge node and use this as a project 3D. And now if we go view, this should at least camera track with our shot and then we can comp it into our scene a little bit better. But now it's going to be moving with the camera movement. And so it, the way it's going to eject is like that. I'm going to roto out the, um, the bullet right there. We'll use pre-multiply RGBA and I'm just going to line that up. Now we're just going to invert that mask. I'm going to go ahead and add in a grade node here. Actually, before the grade node, we're even going to add in a saturation node. I'm just going to remove some of the saturation a little bit. And then with our grade node here, we're going to change the white point. Yeah, and that feels like it sits in the environment a lot better rather than it feeling like it was just like this gold thing that couldn't possibly exist inside of that world. I'm going to add in some motion blur. So here's a little trick. Uh, we're going to use pixel motion blur. If we add in a motion blur, it's gonna use pixel estimation. Uh, the thing you gotta be worried about is these doubling that's kind of happening here. Zoom in on that and just focus on it. We can add in like more samples and that will kind of connect the dots a little bit better. This will take longer to render because of that. Let's go ahead and play back the whole shot here. I'm trying to lessen the amount of the motion blur here. I think 0.2 maybe. Uh, the other thing I want to do, and I should have done this first before I did anything else, but I didn't, so here we are. I'm going to add in a dot, and I'm going to add in a denoiser, and we're going to just find kind of like a gray area of our scene. And what it's going to do is it's going to kind of denoise the whole shot as a whole, and I'm going to add in another gray node here, and uh, we'll plug that into our denoiser. And now if we split uh, using like, W on our keyboard, we're going to see the difference between the original shot and our newly added grain that we have here. And I'm going to just add ever so slight amount of reds, change the size a little bit to match our scene. And that's not an uh, insane amount of grain, but we're going to add that into the end of our shot, very end of our sequence. The other thing we're going to have to add back into the end of our sequence is a lens distortion. So go back to our original camera tracker that we have here, and we're going to output a distortion node. And it's going to redistort our footage at the very end. I'm going to do that before the grain. And let's go ahead and add in a little bit of camera shake, like you said. I'm going to add in a grid warp. And we're just going to split up primarily this section here. We're going to add in a keyframe without doing anything here. And then on frame 1018, we're just going to take this whole section of his gun, specifically as much localized as possible just the part of his arm right here maybe this so let's just grab both of these guys I'm just gonna split this up as much as possible the more localized we can get this gun the better that way when we try to move him we're not moving too much of anything else i'm gonna grab that and this and then honestly we could just copy paste our keyframe be from before so let's just see how this looks i'm gonna with that, I don't know if you just saw what I just did. I hit auto alpha there, so that way it's not doubling our footage over top of each other. But I'm gonna be merging the grid warp back on top here. This is just like an easy trick to quickly get a roto rather than us having to do a whole thing ourselves. We can blend back our regular footage into our shot. Let's see. So now that's going to basically move the gun back, but then keep the rest of the environment the same. And obviously we're getting a bit of a hard line here, we could just blur this and then that way we're not missing out as much with his arm kind of just like shaking a little bit more there we just added a little bit of a kickback effect to it let's move this whole thing by one frame and then maybe it, over the course of two frames he kind of starts to kick back this isn't bad i'm not uh, not too angry with it let's try adding a little bit of a camera like uh, effect to it i'm gonna add a transform node in before we get that lens distortion Change the scale here to 1.02 and let's set a keyframe here. Just adding a transform node in before our lens distortion here with just two keyframes and scaling it into 1.02. But yeah, it's just a transform node and then I also set the motion blur to one. So that way we would get some motion blur on that movement. I think uh, that's going to be the shot, guys. Thanks for watching, though. I'll see you guys next time.